movement can be done with the D-pad or the analog stick. The analog stick, which offers 360 degree movement, is not available on PC. Press X to go crouch, then tap whatever direction to face that direction. Then hold that direction to go prone. While prone, you can crawl forwards or backwards, or spin in place. Depending on where Snake's feet are, that's where he will stand up, if you press X again. Hold triangle to go into first person view, then tap L1 or R1 to shift your weight. To do a punch punch kick combo, tap circle three times. We also call this a PPK. If you want to do double punches, tap the circle button twice. You can do this very quickly as long as you give a little space between the taps, or just press circle once to do one single punch. To equip an item or weapon, hold L2 or R2. While in weapons, press right or up to move down through weapons, and left or down to move up through weapons. While in items, press left or up to move down through items, or right and down to move up through items. You can press L1 or R1 to equip or unequip whatever you have in your slot. To choke a guard, approach from the rear, and don't hold a direction while tapping square to choke him out. To knock, go against the surface and press circle. To throw, approach a guard as if you're going to choke them, but hold a direction while you press square. Depending on the direction you're holding, they'll be thrown in a certain direction. Movement with the D-pad is pretty simple, as you can only go in 8 directions. Being able to go into one direction can be pretty useful in certain rooms and boss fights. However, if you want very fluid lines that aren't 45 degrees, you'll have to tap to adjust. Remember, even though you can't have 360 degree movement with D-pad, it does offer some advantages in certain situations. The analog stick offers full 360 degree circular movement. This allows you to have the most fluid lines possible, and in certain rooms, it's better to use the analog stick just to get that slightly better line when speedrunning. But as said before, certain rooms will call for the D-pad due to the nature of the movement you need to use. When going through doors, make sure to go through the opening so you don't run into the door while it's opening. Unless you hear the elevator coming after the first button press, you must press it twice. How fast the elevator arrives is random. Once you hear the chime, you can do your input for the next floor. When climbing a ladder, make sure you're directly in front of the ladder before pressing circle. It's a bit deceiving, so if you're unsure, just run into the ladder before pressing circle. It is a common misconception that Snake must fully face the elevator panels in Disc 2 to interact with them. You only need to turn a small amount to press circle and start the elevator. Just like the ladders, make sure you are next to the panel before pressing circle. Aim for the keypad. If you want a soft reset, hold L1, L2, R1, R2, select and start all at the same time, until the screen goes black. The start button pauses the game, which also pauses the in-game timer. You can use this in certain boss fights like Wolf, so you can aim better while she moves across. When you approach a guard, you can actually brush up on their clothing and cause them to notice you. Be careful, as this can cause an alert. Punching a guard before choking is a good way to make sure you don't get an alert. Just be aware that the punch range is not the same as the choke range. Also, if you punch too much, you can interact with their model and cause an alert that way. So make sure you get into the sweet spot for the choke before you start choking. If you want to just approach and choke, Make sure that you're flush with their back before you start choking them. With punches, you can actually choke a guard while he's turning to face you. If a guard is punched seven times, they'll be knocked out for a short duration. This can also be achieved by throwing a guard twice, 
or throwing a stun grenade. Ten chokes will kill a guard, nine will knock them out. This is more important for all bosses big boss, so you can avoid killing Johnny. When a guard has the white exclamation mark above their head, they are blind. A kick will knock a guard to the ground, allowing you time to run past them. Using the guard in front of the vent on the heliport, this is the visual representation of guard vision across the difficulties. Distance is measured in chaff running steps. Easy for 3, normal for 4, hard for 5, and 8 for extreme. It seems weird to call this a technique, but it is important. Snake moves faster if he has a weapon equipped versus if he's running barehanded. You should always run with a weapon equipped whenever you can. If you don't have a weapon equipped, you're more likely to take alerts, you're going to move more slowly, and you're more likely to take damage. All of these are bad. Very bad. There are surfaces in this game that will create noise if you run along them. The game intends you to crawl or creep, but we have a better technique, called skating. By swapping between your weapon over these surfaces, this will stop Snake's foot from landing on the floor. It is faster to do this slowly rather than quickly, but either way will do. Keep in mind that you do move more slowly than running normally with this method, and it's not always necessary depending on difficulty due to guard hearing differences. The quick throw, or throw cancel, is an essential technique. By equipping a weapon after throwing a guard, we can cancel the animation of the throw. This makes us faster and less likely to be spotted by other guards when we throw someone. However, since it's faster to run with a weapon out, it's ideal to unequip at the last second. But if you're a beginner, it's okay to unequip earlier, just so you don't mess up. Remember, you must unequip your weapon to throw or else you'll use your weapon instead. This technique is going to take practice, so use the armory, the tank hanger on alert, or the tower A climb for practice. It is possible to throw one guard into another, creating a domino effect. Just like the throw cancel, we can cancel the end animation of a choke. After you've successfully choked out a guard, equip your weapon. You'll know to equip your weapon by the guard's audio and Snake's animation. If you are playing on console, mashing method is important for skipping codex fast. The first method shown is pecking. Tense your forearm so you rapidly vibrate your hand. Let your thumb give your index finger support. I put all the stress in my arm, as stressing the wrist or finger gets tiring. You don't want any distance between your finger and the button. The second method uses the bony part of the thumb to mash. My index finger gives support to my thumb, and I tense my forearm. I tend to go to this method if my primary mash hand gets tired. Keep in mind, once you skip the initial page of text, you can mash any face button. You don't need to mash super hard all the time, as certain points during codec calls have no dialogue, instead talking head animation. Knowing the script will help you with that. The third method pecks at two buttons, alternating between them. The double peck. A table is recommended for this method. Other methods of mashing include physically vibrating the controller, or using a spoon or pen cap. Frankly, you should just do what you're most comfortable with. And then mash! Don't mash X to skip cutscenes. You're tiring yourself out and making it slower. Instead, hold X to skip cutscenes. Be careful though, because if you hold X for too long, you may crouch after the cutscene is over in certain areas. 
pay attention to the audio to know when to let go of X. But if you do this on PC when multiple cutscenes in a row, you can softlock the game. On PC, you can hold X for one cutscene. If there are several in a row, press the skip button, like escape or X for each individual scene. Weapons are always in a set order, so as long as you know the order of the weapons, you can quickly move around the weapon menu to your next weapon. On PC, you should use hotkeys instead. Here is the order of the weapons. On PC, each number in the list is the weapon hotkey, zero for PSG1. The no item spot will always appear beneath the weapon you have equipped. If you are moving that way, it is optimal to unequip your weapon, then enter the menu, to save an input. The item menu is not as simple. No item will always appear above the item you have equipped. But, whenever you have an item equipped that is not the card, or have no item equipped, the card will appear beneath it. This means that the item menu is not set, like the weapon menu is. This makes optimal item menuing really weird. Cutscenes can affect menuing. After a cutscene or boss defeat, you will automatically unequip your weapon. This forces you to press R1 to re-equip, or equip another weapon instead. If you hold the menu button, the no item spot will be moved further away than it should. Snake spins inhumanly fast when he's prone. Advanced runners can exploit this and use a 180 spin or flip on the ground. Because Snake stands up wherever his feet are, we can use this to save some time whenever we're crawling. This can also be used when using the vent glitch. Keep in mind, beginners don't need to really worry about this so much. The kick and a punch-punch kick combo can be cancelled. By pressing the X button during the animation, Snake will stop his combo. This is useful during the ninja fight. If you're missing your attacks, you don't want to finish the animation and get counterattacked. To die quickly, go prone, as the animation of Snake dying will be faster if he's prone. When a player dies in MGS1, the game keeps track of the item and weapon equipped, allowing you to re-equip them with L1 and R1. This is called the RAM manipulation. Make a save in the armory after the cell fight, and equip chaff grenade and the card or ration. Fall into the pit, then select exit at game over. When you begin a new game, you can press L1 or R1 instead of opening the inventory menus for the initial items. This trick does not work on very easy for integral or on the PC port. If you are playing any percent, you can also set up the catch up on another save. After Arakan brings you equipment, hide under the bed. When Johnny comes back, he'll discover you're missing and enter the cell area to look for you. Once he enters the cell, take him out. Do not pick up your gear. Instead, take damage from the turret. Open the door, then equip the ketchup and go through. Save on the other side. Now you can quickly load this save and die with the ketchup out. Remember, you will need to load both RAM manipulation saves to set up the chaff and the ketchup. Make sure to load the ketchup after the chaff so you can overwrite the card or ration. Thank you for watching. Because this video is so long, weapons and their techniques will be in a separate video.